fear. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me and he shall set me upon a rock. Look to two or three people and say, God's got this. No matter what you're facing, if it be a financial situation, God's got this. If it may be sickness, God's got this. If it's something in your mind, God's got this. So I wonder if we could take that mentality right now of knowing that God has it and apply that to whatever it is. Let's just lift our hands right now. Lord, we love you, God. We trust in you. We believe in you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all you're going to do for us, Lord. Hallelujah. There's nothing too great for you, God. We worship your name. We praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing, The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. It's the defender behind me. Defender behind me. And I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. Cups overflowing. Cups overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. And I won't fear. I won't fear. Let's sing hallelujah. Just like that tonight. Hallelujah. I am not alone. He's my comfort. Always holds me close. And he always.
lives within me. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. My victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me, my victory, my victory. Your spirit lives within me, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within me. my worship 
prayer tonight. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. And I will not be silent. I will always I live 
of him right now. Lord, we love you, God. Why don't you continue to give the Lord praise in this house tonight. Worship him and thank him for everything that he's done. Master, you're wonderful in this place today. God, you're mighty in this house today. Come on, lift your voices, lift your hands. Begin to give him praise in this house for all that he has done. Oh, mighty God. Oh, glorious God. Bless this house today. I'd like to extend an opportunity for everyone who has a need in this place to come forward and allow the ministry to pray for you and every need that you may have. Do you feel an expectancy in this house tonight? I feel something is about to happen, and I know that that that's, seems cliche, but I really feel something building in this place. And I'm expecting him to do something wonderful. Will you go to him in prayer with me right now? God, we need your touch in this house. Master, we want your anointing upon our lives, upon our hearts, upon our minds. Lord, every need that we have in this place, we lay it before you, God. We ask for your divine blessing. We ask for your holy touch. Why don't you reach forward to this need right now and ask God to have his will. Holy Ghost, we thank you today for what you've already done. But Master, we ask that you would go with us. Lord, to wherever it is that you desire us to be. Strengthen our body. Touch him, heal him, purge him, cleanse him right now. Come on, believe with me in this place that God has taken away all of the cancer. Come on. Do you believe it tonight? Do you know that he's a healer? Do you know that he's able? Come on, worship him right now. God, you're mighty in this place and we worship you and thank you for all that you've done. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I agree, Brother LeBannon. Something is moving, moving, moving. Amen. Aren't you glad to see Brother Pork at church? Been close somewhere around four months that he hadn't been able to be in the house of the Lord. Man, glad that he is here today, worshiping and praising the Lord. Glad you are here. Hallelujah. Glad that our folks online are watching. Most of all, I'm glad Jesus is here. I feel him here in this place. Praise be to God. Amen. The Lord bless you. You could be seated. I just want to remind everybody this coming week of some exciting things that are happening. Give you some highlights. Those of you that have announcements can make your way right now. But I want to... Remind everybody about our life groups that are going on. Amen. The Bible said that we are to not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. It's not just about church here on regular service. It's about we are being a church in, in whatever way. Thank God for all of our life groups. We appreciate your hard work. Amen. Some exciting things are coming. Sister Grace is coming right now to tell us uh, heads up about some things that are happening next month. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, so as you all probably know, January 13th, we are having our sanctuary dedication, and we are so excited. We're having um, Pastor Wilkes and Nate Whitley coming, and we, can't, we couldn't be more happy to finally get this done, and, which it is done, but, you know, sanctified by God. <laughs> but at that service, we are going to be having a very special presentation um, I sent out a group me a while back. It was a long time ago. But we are going to have a video presentation of all kinds of pictures and videos at the MPC throughout the whole entire 107 years? 107 years of MPC. So if you guys have any pictures or videos that you would like to share with me, that would be fantastic because I have, 
I need a lot of them. <laughs> um, I will have a few different ways for you guys to um, give them to me. I have a Google Drive that you can put in your pictures. It's super easy. You just put them on your phone. They're on there. It's good. And then I can also have you guys send them to me to my phone. Or if you want email, I can give you guys my email, whatever it is. If I have to, I can get physical pictures and then scan them. But I really would not like to do that. <laughs> but I do want the old pictures. But I can't do that. If you will do that, I need like a baggie that has your name on it. And if some way possible, all of these pictures that you are giving to me, if you could give me kind of like a time frame of what you think it is. So like if it's 1910, 1910, whatever it is, you know, just put it on there so I know that it is that time frame. And then so I can put them down in um, order. I will put those, my phone number, my email, the Google Drive, all in group me tonight. Thank you so much in advance for doing it because it will help me immensely. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. This year, MPC is being intentional about consecrating ourselves the first three days of each month. And as May is coming to an end, we are looking forward to June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd as being our focus days of consecration. In June, we will be focusing on worship. For these days, we want to put worship music in every home, in every car, on every phone, and allow God to guide our church through worship. We will be creating and sending out worship playlists in whatever form is most uh, accessible to you. is If that is CD, we will create CDs. If that is Apple Music, we will have Apple Music. If it's just YouTube, we will create YouTube uh, playlists and we will be posting these and making them available to each family. We will also be making playlists for our kids. So make sure you get involved with this. Lead your family in worship in your homes. And then to conclude our days of consecration, we will be hosting a night of worship in our brand new beautiful sanctuary. This will take place on Thursday, June 3rd at 7 p.m. We thoroughly enjoyed our last night of worship and we have high expectations that our church is going to be blessed through these days of consecration. Thank you. Amen. Everybody say June 19th. We're so excited. We're going to be having a sections four five and six outing to the ark encounter this isn't just for young people this is for anybody who wants to go we're so pumped because we have this opportunity to finally get back together and go see something amazing i've never been to the ark encounter so i am super pumped for this we have uh, some prices for some ages uh, youth tickets that's ages 11 through 17 are 25 dollars and adult tickets, that's 18 and up, are $50. I would like to meet with all those who think you may be going right after service to get a head count because we've talked to the people who run the Ark Encounter and we may be able to get some discounted prices. So we need to get a head count so we can get some discounted prices for our young people. And when we get closer to the date, I'll have some more information, y'all, when we're leaving and whatever. We're so excited for this and we're expecting great things. Thank y'all. This morning, we honored our seniors uh, for their accomplishments, and their graduation is coming up, and I would like to just announce that to you. It will be this Friday night at Medora High School in the gymnasium, and we are thankful that our governor opened everything back up for us so that we can have actual graduation ceremony. We don't have to do it virtually this year, so we're thankful. We're thankful for that. It starts at 7, uh, 7.30 on Friday night, again, at the gymnasium. And I believe these girls are, will probably be celebrating their graduation with parties, and I know Savannah's will be that Saturday following graduation on Friday. It will be back here in the, in the annex, and it is a, um, an open house 
so from one to four I believe is is when that is so we'd like for y'all to come the whole church is invited to come celebrate with her on Friday night at graduation along with Caitlin and then also at Savannah's graduation party her reception on the Saturday following and I know Caitlin will be having one Caitlin's going on the senior trip so she won't be around after that so uh, her her party will follow uh, in a week or so so we'll get you more information on that for her but remember Friday night graduation in the gymnasium thank you praise the Lord would you stand the ushers make your way to the front I just want to mention a couple things next Sunday is going to be fifth Sunday so we'll be having just Sunday morning service we will not be having a Sunday night service amen come to that also, the anniversary and dedication service is something I want to ask you to be praying about. Pastor Wilkes will be preaching uh, Sunday morning, and then Brother Nate Whitley will be preaching Sunday night. And both of these brothers have great connection to our church. Uh, Brother Wilkes, uh, I'm honored to be his pastor, but also he is our, our prophet. We believe in the fivefold ministry, and I believe his prophetic gifting has operated many times in our church, and we're thankful for that. Brother Whitley, uh, he started here, really. He had, had the chance to come and intern with us, and we're excited about having him, so please be praying for that. Are you ready to give? Are you ready to give? Because the Lord said, I love a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. The word cheerful there is hilarious. <laughs> Hallelujah, I get to give. God's blessed us. Lord, we love you today, and we thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for faithful people. Lord, for their tithes and their offerings. Thank you, God, for sincerity. God, and it is with the increase, God, we continue to give above and above, Lord, in abundance. We praise you, Lord, now bless gift and giver in Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready to worship? If you would just go to the right out of each aisle there and back around to the left side as you worship the Lord in this place. Amen. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated at this time. I have a feeling you'll probably be standing up pretty quick here again, but please worship with the choir as we sing tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, i 
ever seen The mountain of their sin just disappeared For anyone who's ever felt The hand of heaven reach down through their fears And dry their tears For any life once empty Now find itself alive and full of songs Victory songs Then you'll understand the reason For the way the saints of God may carry on When I shout, no, I'm shouting From a heart that's been washed clean When I run, no, I'm running From a past that's been reading To the world it might look crazy There's just no telling what you're Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise your name. For anyone who knows the hope that keeps them moving on through troubled days. For anyone who knows they have a future and a hope beyond the grave. Every life's a different story. How he led us out of darkness into light There's no way to keep us silent Every breath's another chance to Days. For anyone who knows they have a future and a hope beyond the grave. Every life's a different story of how we led us out of darkness into night. There's no way to keep us silent. Every breath's another chance to testify So when I shout, no, I'm shouting From a heart that's been washed clean When I run, no, I'm running From a past that's been reading To the world that might look crazy There's just no telling what you're gonna do Worship Him for a few minutes in this place. Lord, we love you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise your name, Lord. You're worthy of our praise. My past erased, my name He changed. Let's testify. My past erased, my name He changed. Let's testify. My name is 
Somebody say, praise the Lord. Woo, come on, clap your hands. Those are great testimonies. Praise God. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord today. Refreshed already. Amen. Just remain standing for a few minutes. To the MPC family that has been around for numbers of years, Brother Weiniger does not need an introduction. You know who he is. But I want to today tell you what an honor it is and a privilege it is to have Brother Weiniger, Bishop Weiniger now. He is overseer and his son-in-law's pastor and uh, still doing the work of the Lord. Amen. Preaching all over and we appreciate his ministry and I appreciate his friendship. I thought one of the first things I ever did with Brother Weiniger outside of church, we played ball, like, you know, stuff like that. But he took me to my second coon hunt ever. Uh, I went, went before, but you took me to my second, and you did take me to my last. <laughs> Amen. But we're blessed to have him today and his connection to this church. Uh, stand strong, and we are glad that he's able to be here. Will you come, Brother Weiniger? Obey God. Preach the word. Let's give the Lord a great big hand for the servant of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Would you go ahead and give that hand clap to the Lord because he is worthy. I said he is worthy of all of our praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Thank you, Pastor Gill. What, a, what an awesome display of power, the presence of God that we felt all through this service and this morning. But the miracles, the great thing about this is God's still in the miracle working business because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. And for those of you, uh, let, me, let me just say this again. Thank you, Pastor Gill, Sister Gill, uh, for the kind basket and all the goodies. And uh, thank you, Bishop Walls, for all the years of putting up with me. I hope that I have not been a disappointment. So overwhelmed tonight at the presence of God. I never want to get to the place that it just becomes another service, another place to go, another thing to do. I want to always be able to feel the presence of God. Amen. For those of you who've been around a while, I thought Brother Gill was going to call me old but I am drawing social security so this book that I have in my hand belonged to my papal herald this is the one that he would raise when he sang touch not the book there is no other that tells of one who died to save that answers all life's deepest questions and sheds a light beyond the grave. I'm sure most of you know it. You can sing the chorus with us. Let's worship the Lord as we try to sing this.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kid G, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I have my dad's Bible that I chose to preach from tonight, at Papal Harold's Bible. These two Bibles represent 151 years combined apostolic people, men. My dad had the Holy Ghost about 71 years, Papal Herald, 80 years. I am honored to be able to hold these. Don't, don't mess with this. Don't mess with this. It has stood through time, and it'll stand when you're gone. I said it'll stand when you're gone. Thank you for being here tonight. I know Pastor Gill announced it, and thank you for coming anyway. And our friends, Jim and Tammy Bush, Brother and Sister Bush, were glad they came, pastored them, or I tried to anyway. I don't know how good a job I did, but uh, we're glad when I pastored in Bedford, we're glad they're here. This morning early, uh, for some reason in retirement, I feel like I have to wake the birds up. So usually before daylight, I'm awake. And uh, got up this morning and was drinking a cup of coffee, sitting in the chair, and I said, God, I, I want to I hear your voice. I want to know what you would have for me to preach tonight. And I, I came with something that I really felt God would have me to preach. Pastor Gill preached an amazing message this morning. Uh, man, I, sometimes we have to wait before we can go. Amen. Amen. And during his message, I felt like that I heard the voice of God. And as the uh, testimonies were being given the Lord just really confirmed to me what, uh, what I feel like that I need to preach, and it's not what I came with, something totally different. But if you'll allow me for a little while tonight, I'll do my best to preach to you what God, and I'm coming with an intense burden, I don't mind telling you. This thing has weight on my mind today. God is getting ready to come. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm surprised that He has not already. But if you can't see the day and hour we're living in, something's wrong with your eyesight spiritually. Amen. Mark chapter 1, verse 4 through verse number 8. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost." And if I could impose on you for just a couple more minutes in John chapter 1, starting with verse 23. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, 
as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent of the Pharisees, and they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who is coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day John said, Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but he that should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I come baptizing with water. John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode on him. And here's that phrase again. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou seest the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. Before I give you my text tonight, Bishop, would you pray? Ask the anointing of the Lord over all this tonight. Everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. I'd like to continue reading, and I know this is a lot of reading, but I, I need to put it all together to make it fit. Matthew chapter 11, it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ... He sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? The same man who said, Behold, the Lamb of God, now says, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. My text for tonight is simply this. What happened between Jordan and prison? Let me preface my message with this statement concerning prison. Prison is not always bars and concrete walls and barbed wire and armed guards. Prison can be cancer. Prison can be financial difficulties. Prison can be family problems. Prison can be disappointments. Prison can be simply heartache because life is life. Things happen. By the way, I'm glad my brother Andy's here. It's inside between me and him. Ask him about it later, he'll tell you. Prison can be a life of turmoil and heartache and broken dreams and things that you don't think is fair. But I would like to direct us back to John. He said, I knew him not. Now, I don't know if I'm interpreting this right or not, but you just allow me to to tell you what I feel. 
I don't know that John ever saw Jesus. I can't find it in the scripture that they ever crossed paths. But I do find that when Mary went and knocked on the door and Elizabeth came to the door and Mary said, I just want to tell you that I've had a visitation and I know I'm ad-libbing here, but I've had a visitation from the angel and I am expecting the Messiah. And the Bible said that when the babe, which was John, in Elizabeth's womb heard the salutation, he leaped for joy and was filled with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't say there was ever a family reunion and Jesus and John ever played basketball together. It doesn't say that they ever crossed paths. I don't know whether they did or not. All I know is that John said, I knew him not. But I wonder how many times Elizabeth would have said to John as a child growing up that when Mary came and told me that she was expecting the Messiah, you leaped in my womb, son, and God filled you with the Holy Ghost before you were ever born. And the bedtime stories were not Humpty Dumpty set on the wall, but the bedtime stories in, in Elizabeth's household as she would talk to John before he went to sleep, he would say, Mama, tell me about my cousin Jesus. Tell me about the one that you said I was so happy even in your, in your womb that I leaped for joy. Tell me. And as the time progressed, words would come filtering down. Did you hear what Jesus did yesterday? Did you hear what Jesus did today? Did you hear what he did at the pool of Bethesda? Did you hear what he did to blind Bartimaeus? Did you hear what he did to the woman with the issue of blood? But John said, I didn't know him. All I know is that the man that the voice that told me to come and baptize said that when I see the Spirit descending, that I'll know that that's who he is. Pastor Gill, Bishop Walls, can you imagine the feeling as John stood in the River Jordan and Jesus came walking down that dusty road? And John said, Behold, whoo, behold the Lamb of, this is the one that I was telling you all about. This is the one that, and he's almost at loss for words because of the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that he felt standing there in that river. I can't imagine how he felt when he took Jesus by the wrist and grabbed a handful of whatever he had on and put him down in that water in baptism. And then the Bible said that immediately the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And for 40 days, Jesus fasted and prayed. And the Bible said, and afterward, he was hungered. And when he came out of the wilderness, he heard that John was in prison. I'm fixing to blow your mind right here. Jesus didn't even go visit him. And he departed unto Galilee. John's in prison. Jesus knows he's in prison. Jesus knows where you are. He didn't deliver John out of prison. He just said, you go back and tell John the things that you have seen and heard. Now I'm fixing to preach for just a little while. How many times have we seen our contemporaries, people that we baptize in Jesus' name, seen them filled with the Holy Ghost, and they can't wait to get out and set the world on fire? Pastor Gill, what, what can I do? What can I do to help around the church? Oh, man, I can't wait. We're having prayer meeting. Thank God we're having prayer meeting. And that elation and that joy and that power. But then comes a prison experience, and then they're saying, are you the one, or is this really real? Let me tell you something. The same God that filled you with the Holy Ghost uh, will bring you through that prison experience. Right. You don't understand. Well, I may not, but let me tell you something. I, I followed Brother Walls around when he first came to Medora 46 years ago, and I, I, was, I was just a pup followed him around to conferences and camp meetings and, and I listened to men tell stories. I listened to J.L. Pipkin and I listened to J. Frank Wilson and I listened to Raymond Bishop and I listened to these men tell stories and I thought to myself, I wish I had stories. 46 years later, 
I got stories. Some of them I wish I didn't have. And if it hadn't been for that Jordan experience, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. If I hadn't have stayed in a place of prayer, stayed in a place of knowing that God's my only hope, I don't know if I could have endured or not. And if you walk away from the presence of God, you are leaving a Jordan experience to remain in a prison. Are you the one or do we look for another? Brother John Yeary, come here and help me, will you, brother? Brother John, come up here and get your get your sign if you can find it. Brother David, would you would you help him that, about the, about the cancer? I want to show you something. I remember when these people started coming to Medora Church. What a blessing! Brother John didn't have the Holy Ghost then, but he got it now. Look here. Prison. How did you feel when the doctor said you got cancer? Said, how would you feel? How would you feel when they, he come and told you, the doctor told you your husband's got cancer? Prison. Where are you, God? Where are you, God? Are you the one? Or do we look for another? You go tell John Yeary the things which you have seen and heard. You go tell John Yeary about the people that God has already healed of cancer. You just go tell John Yeary the things you've seen and heard. That's the last discourse that we know of between Jesus and John the Baptist. He gave his head for the kingdom. But let me tell you something. What has happened to your relationship with God? Are you still feeling that anointing? Are you still feeling that exaltation when you come to the house of God and you lift your hands and you worship God? What's happened between Jordan and prison? Thank you. Thank you. Brother Larry Brewer, I won't ask you to come up here, but I'll ask you to stand. If he can. There he goes. Just stand right there. I remember when Larry and Linda prayed through to Holy Ghost the first time. And I also remember when they had a prison experience and they quit coming for a while. And I'm, I'm not degrading y'all in any way. Stay with me. But I drove the church van and picked up Mike and Joe and Steve. When mom and dad didn't come. But sitting in the area about where Sister Ruth and Sister Kathy are sitting in revival, sat Larry and Linda. And Larry's gripping the back of the seat till his knuckles turned white. And Sister Linda had already come to the altar and was praying. And I got all three of them boys around their dad. Joe was on one side, Mike was on the other, and Steve was a little scudder, and I sent him under the pew to come up under his dad. I said, Steve, when you get up there, I want you to throw your arms around your daddy's neck. All's fair in love and war, folks. And we were in a battle for Larry and Linda Brewer's soul. He grabbed all three of them boys at the same time. And stood up, all six foot four of him, whatever he is, speaking in tongues. What happened between Jordan and prison? This, oh, God. I, I know this is Pentecost Sunday, but I'm talking about a Pentecost experience that doesn't get old. I'm talking about when disappointments come, he's still God. I'm talking about when the money's not there, he's still God. I'm talking about when friends let me down. He's still God. He's the same God when I'm standing in the River Jordan as he is when I'm in a prison and I don't know which way to go. I don't know which way to turn, but I can reach back, Brother Pork, and know that he is still God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. 
Talk to me, Papa Harold. My papa was not a preacher, but this Bible is marked. I wonder how many times Harold Shepherd was in a prison situation and he opened this Bible and he underlined a scripture. Eighty years he had some prison experiences. Talk to me, Gene Weiniger, when your house blew up. I heard my dad say, everything I worked for, I lost it in an instant. What you going to do when prison comes? I'm sorry I'm playing on memory here, but about all I got left. Talk to me, Bishop. Tell me about some of the prison experiences that you and Sister Walls went through. Tell me about some of the tears you shed. We better have time. Two thousand sixteen I had a herniated disc, had to have surgery. In February I had knee replacement in May the same year. December the same year had total ankle replacement. But I had made the statement, Brother Gill, a few months before that, we had had a situation in our church and lost a couple of our saints just a matter of 30 days. And I was preaching one night, and I was, in, I was standing in the River Jordan. I was feeling it. Whoo, Lord, I was feeling it. I said, bring it on, devil. I can take anything you throw at me. Less than one year later, and I made the statement, if they, have, if they have to push me in in a wheelchair, I'm going to church. I didn't go in in a wheelchair, but I went in on crutches. I went in on a knee scooter. I didn't sit on the platform for about four months, but I went to church. There was nothing wrong with my voice, and there was nothing wrong with my hands. And I had told the devil I could take anything he threw at me. So every time I'd go to church, I'd wade out in the River Jordan because I knew that's where the anointing was. I knew that's where I could feel and see that dove descending. He said, I didn't know him, but he that sent me to baptize said, when you see the Spirit, mm, I feel some anointing flowing right now. I said, I feel some anointing flowing right now. There's some of you in this place tonight, and I don't have to know your personal situation. I just know what I'm feeling in my spirit. You've been going through a prison experience, and you've kind of pointed your finger at everybody else. But if you want to stay in that shape, you can. But if you want to wade back out in the River Jordan and feel the anointing of Pentecost again, if you want to have that upper room experience like you had years ago, you can have it tonight because he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever, and he never changes. It's all up to you what you want out of life. I just can't do it. Yeah, you can. I'm sorry, I couldn't help but sing when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Testimony song. Talk to me, John O., Blind, walk to church. I made garden at his place one year, and I went to work the garden, and I, I thought, well, I'll stop and visit with him a little while. And I heard him talking. And I stood and listened, and it was a one-sided conversation. There was nobody talking back to him that I could hear. So I peeked in the window and said to Kathy, Sister Ruth, he was down on his knees in front of his couch having a Jordan experience. That's why when we went to Jewel's house and took guitar and accordion 
and he's laying on his sick bed, deathbed. And we started singing, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I saw his hand lift just barely. And a tear started running down his face. And he started mouthing the words. He wasn't strong enough to sing with us, but he was having a Jordan experience. If you can't feel God like you did when you first came to him, prison has sapped you of your love for God, your trust in God. He's been too good to me for me to go back now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've had some prison experiences that I didn't like. The Bible said that Israel went out of Egypt with a high hand. They're high-fiving, Brother Lebanon. Man, they're singing, they're jumping, they're juking and jiving. And they get just a few hours away to the Red Sea. And they said, you just brought us out here to die. What happened, Brother Gill, when people say, tell me what I need to do to be saved. Tell me what I have to do because I want to be saved. That's Jordan. But then prison says, I have to do all that? You mean I have to? Then it becomes not what shall I do, but it's what I can get by with. What happened to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord? I'm talking Jordan. You get this thing in your heart. There won't be none of this, I wonder. I don't go around asking Sandy all the time, baby, what do I need to do to stay married? (laughs) I know what I need to do to stay married. (laughs) I've not been married 49 years by being stupid. Austin, if you haven't learned yet, you always get the last word in. I'm telling you, son. Yes, ma'am. And life will be good. I had a young couple in our church got married, and they hadn't been married but just a few weeks, and he went out and paid about $600 for a handgun and didn't tell her. She found out about it, and it was prison. (laughs) And he came to us and said, but my dad said, It's easier to get forgiveness than it is permission. And I said, your dad's been married for 40 years. (laughs) It's a little bit different. But Pharaoh and the armies of Egypt were after Israel. And they said, we told you to leave us alone. We didn't want to even come out here to begin with. But yet the Bible said that the Lord heard their cry by reason of the taskmaster. And he sent Moses to deliver them. We have to stay fast in this thing. Troubles is going to come. They're going to be there. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And I'm trying my best to to wrap this up. He said, "You, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? What happened between your love for the truth and your love for the Word of God and you can't wait to get to church to now till it's, well, I, I don't know if I'm going to go tonight or not. You know, it's just Bible study night and, and the bishop's going to be teaching and we've already heard everything. He, you know, he's been there 46 years and we've heard everything and he'll probably just be repeating himself over and over again. Paul said, I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Sometimes we need to hear the fact that we need to get to an altar of prayer I said, we need to get to an altar of prayer. 
I listened to our bishop praying over here today before service speaking in tongues and there was a cold chill begin to run down my back. I thought, oh God, don't ever let us as we get older lose a Jordan experience. But God, let that fire burn like never before. God, let that fire burn like never before because we got young people that's following up behind us. We got young men and young women that are going to need the anointing. They're going to need the power of a Jordan experience and prison is going to come but they got to have something instilled in them. You did run well. I don't want that said of me. I wanted to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to be like the apostle Paul. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's not the book. There is no other. The tales of one. The psalmist said in chapter 51 and verse 10, he said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew. If you renew something, you're fixing something that you've already had. And then he said two verses later, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. God, if I ever get in a prison situation and the devil beats me up, reckon he's really the one? I want to remember, I want to go back to Jordan. I said, I want to go back to Jordan and remember the anointing that I felt when Jesus came walking down to the river. I want to remember the goosebumps, if you will, that I felt when I baptized him. I don't know what, 50 days later, John's in prison. Are you the one? Or do we look for another? This church couldn't begin to hold half of the people who have questioned God in a prison experience and never came back. Thank you, Mamma Phoebe. For carrying mortar. Thank you for giving two dollars to the building fund and has six months to pay your pledge. I have a letter in my desk at church that Memo Phoebe wrote about her experience at Pentecost. She wasn't raised in this. It wasn't even here. They didn't even know about it. But she came to see what was going on. And six generations later, somebody's still having a Jordan experience. I can preach this because it's me. Queet and Vicky. We're part of this. But it don't mean nothing if we let prison sap us of our victory. I don't want my Papal Herald, my Mammal Phoebe's, my Mammal Ruby's, my Mammal Easton's. I don't want their sacrifice to be in vain. Mamo Easton used to testify, I don't know very much, but I know enough to be saved. I've been in prison. Somebody help me. I feel God's talking to somebody's heart. You're about to throw the best thing you've ever had in your life down the drain. And I'm going to be real blunt and real plain because that's all I know how to be. 
because you're just simply too stubborn to get out of your seat and make your way to an altar of prayer and say, God, forgive me. God, forgive me for ever doubting you. Forgive me, God, for ever doubting you. I know, God, that you're the same God that you've always been. Life hadn't always been good, but God's always been good. Five more minutes, I promise. I promise, I promise. Sister Vivian, so good to see you. Sorry it has to be like this, but would you stand? I remember the 30 days she got the Holy Ghost. Y'all are laughing. But every night for one month, Vivian came to the altar and spoke in tongues. I thought we was going to have to slap her. I'm like, what in the world is this woman waiting on? We didn't dare tell her. But a 30-day Jordan experience has carried her through some of the darkest prisons. And look at her. Look at her. Step out of here. We're on live feed. They're going to see this all over the world. I love you. Thank you for a Jordan experience. I preached this woman all over the world. I preached about her about everywhere I go. Because of the things she's went through in life, Sister Teresa and Sister Shelley. Y'all know, thank God for a Jordan experience. But I ask you the question tonight, what happened between Jordan and prison? Patrick held up the sign about Sophia. I'm telling you, that could have been a prison for me. I went six months, Elder, and never heard from God, not one time. Preached just because. I took off a sad face and put on a smiley one when I went to the platform. I took off steel-toed shoes and put on my dress shoes spiritually when I went to the platform. But I just preached. I went by my church one day and I said, God, I feel like I'm walking in a circle. And for the first time in six months, God spoke to me and he said, but you're doing what I ask you to do. And by then I'm talking out loud. I said, God, I'm walking in a circle. I'm praying for people's babies and God is, you're healing them and they're living like the devil. And me and Sandy have given our life to the kingdom and our baby's sick. And I preached that Sunday morning walking in a circle. we got to have a Jordan experience or prison will sap us. I need some musicians. If you don't get this in your heart, you know why I said, thy word have I hid in my heart? Not so I could run fast. Not so I could shout high. And I don't know of anybody else in this church that Brother Walls ever asked to do this but me. Yeah, you know where I'm going, don't you? I was sitting, might have been the same night Sandy fell all the way across the platform. I don't remember. I was sitting about over here playing my guitar. The service was, shoom. Brother Wall said, I want you, Brother Donnie, I want you to go down here and shout for me. And I looked at him like he had done eight loco weed or something. And he turned around and looked and said, what are you waiting on? So I started shouting for Brother Wall's. And after about a millisecond, I was shouting because there was something welled up on the inside of me, a Jordan experience. Maybe I needed that and he knew I needed it. I don't know. Paul said, Demas, my fellow laborer. And then he said, Demas has forsaken me. Having loved this present world. 
Come here, Matt Brown. Come here, Seth. Dylan. David. Austin. Find somebody to watch the baby. Come up here. Sorry, Jason, but you're not young no more. Someday, I want to hand this to Seth. I'll give Patrick mine. Give Patrick my dad's. I'll hand this to Seth. I always maintain it. There's going to be sorrow, son. There's going to be trouble, boys. But I want you to look at these guys. I want you to look at these people sitting out here. Look at your pastor. Look at your bishop. What I want you guys to do, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to start worshiping God. Forget that there's 75 other people sitting out here. And Bishop, I want you to stand. And I just want you to put your hands toward these boys. And I want you to bless them. And I want the rest of us to stand right now. The altar's open. Come on, boys. Come on, young men. God, put the Holy Ghost on them right now. God, let them see that man walking down. Behold the Lamb of God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Worship God, Austin. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I feel Jordan moving right now. I feel a Jordan experience. I feel a dove settling on this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, elder saints. Come on, help these young people. Help me show these young people how to worship God. Show them how to have a Jordan experience. Y'all, y'all move in closer. Come on. Make room for those that are behind you to get close to the front. Come on. The elder won't bite you. Come on. Get close to the front. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Give them a Jordan experience right now.
feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come here, Bailey. Right here. Hallelujah. Shelly, Shelly, come up here. Teresa, come here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. you to lift your hands. I want you to start praising God. I want you to tell him how glad you are and how thankful you are that he's been good to you. Ah, come on. Come on, Sean. Right up here. Come on, Sean. Up here. Come on. We're talking about some Jordan experiences going on right now. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
just feel like something good is about to happen. Something good is on its way. Sing it out. Just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, I like that. Let's give the Lord a hand for the word, for the word tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I, f- I just feel revival. I, I feel revival in, in this place. Amen. I, I'm praying Tuesday night, just keep it burning. Keep it burning. Amen. We'll come back Sunday expecting a great time in the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you today. We praise you today. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the heritage of MPC. God, thank you for the cloud of witnesses of those that have gone on before that have went through worse stuff than we've went through. God, and they made it. Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Oh, what an awesome service. Perfect service for you to be here tonight, brother. Amen. Praise God for the, for the testimonies, for the word, for the encouragement, for the strength. Hallelujah. I love the Lord today. Praise God. Brother Matt, will you come right now? I want you to dismiss in prayer. Praise God. What a great group of young men we're blessed with. Woo. Praise God. What a great group of men we have in this church that love God. You know, they say it's churches for sissies. Amen. These are men, men. These are manly men. Love God, worship God. Thank the Lord for, for that. All of our ladies as well, we appreciate what God is doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this night. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to hear your word. We thank you, Lord, for the truth. God, for the reminder, Lord, that you are with us, Lord, and God, that we have, Lord, a promise to hold on to, God, that you will keep us, that you will be with us, Lord. God, we thank you for your spirit tonight, and we pray, Lord, you would go with us. Lord, bring us back Tuesday night, expecting a move of your spirit. Lord, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed.